Родился в Бруклине в 1928 году. Известен как автор сотен заметок к джазовым записям, начиная с 50-х годов. Ари Гитлер был редактором журнала Down Beat в 60-е годы. Писал для метронома, Джаз Таймс, современного ударника. Печатался в Нью-Йорк Таймс и Сан-Франциско Кроника. Помогал Леонарду Фейзеру в написании энциклопедии джаза. Айра огромный поклонник хоккея. У него есть своя команда Горилла Гитлер. Он написал несколько книг о хоккее. Я встретился с ним в его квартире в Манхэттене. Она переполнена виниловыми пластинками, компакт-дисками, книгами, картинами, рисунками его жены. Интерес к джазу в Советском Союзе возник давно. Не во все времена можно было его слушать и исполнять безнаказанно. Некоторые советские музыканты, преданные джазу, уехали в США. Расскажите о их проявлении в джазовой жизни Америки. In 1984... Uh, I was in Bombay and um, Delhi, India, for a jazz festival called the Jazz Yatra, and um, it was held every four years, and at this festival were musicians from all over the world, including uh, the Russian group. Um, <clears throat> led by uh, Nick Levinovsky. Mm-hmm. Allegra, right. Voskin was playing bass. Mm-hmm. Level of musicianship was very high. Uh, in fact, I have a cassette recording I made from my seat, mm. which I have someplace. <laughs> uh, but I was very impressed with the, uh, with the group. The main festival was in Bombay, but they did one night in Delhi. So Phil Schapp the, was the MC in Bombay, but he got a an impacted or an infected wisdom tooth. They had to go back. Mm-hmm. So the festival uh, asked me to be the MC mm-hmm. in Delhi. Mm-hmm. And I had to announce the groups. Mm-hmm. So they gave me a list of the Russian musicians and I had to, you know, pronounce them correctly. <laughs> and in the back of the stage were obviously uh, two maybe KGB agents accompanying that group and they were standing and after I made all the announcements of the names mm-hmm. I looked back and they went person but I heard him play with Igor Mm -hmm. and um, you know and I also heard him with uh, Allegro in um, in in uh, India he was more or less the leader yes uh, of that But 
I think my uh, greatest link to um, Russian musicians was Igor Butman, who I knew nothing about until I heard him play uh, downtown. Uh, there was a, a Russian entrepreneur whose name I forget. Uh, he tried to replicate the Bluebird, uh -huh. you know, by using a concert hall down on Irving Place, which is near 14th Street in Manhattan. And he had, you know, American jazz musicians playing. And he introduced this Igor Butman, who I listened to. And I, I said to myself, very good saxophone player, but he's playing too much like fusion. <laughs> I got a call from a friend of mine who, uh, like myself, was an amateur hockey player, and he said, I've, got, I've met this great uh, Russian saxophonist, and I'd like you to hear him. Uh, his name is Igor Butman, and I said to, to him, oh, I heard him play once. I wasn't that impressed. He said, well, you know, he's also a very good hockey player, <laughs> uh, and he'd like to, um, you know, maybe come and play with your team. <laughs> because we would have uh, what we call scrimmage games, practice uh, games, once a week. Crazy. So uh, Igor called me and he came out and played with us. And I saw what a great hockey player he was. I said, would you like to join uh, my team, Gitler's Gorillas? <laughs> and he did. And, and the first game, he he was so good that this other player tried to to fight him, uh -huh. and they were fighting. And Igor had a long ponytail at that time ah. coming out of the back of his helmet. Uh -huh. And while they were f rolling on the ice, the guy grabbed his ponytail. Uh, that was a mistake because then Igor, you know, took care of him. Uh -huh. And he also, uh, before that, he had scored what turned out to be the winning goal. <laughs> then he was thrown out of the game for fighting. So. We became friendly. I heard him play at the Russian Samovar, uh -huh. and here I, his playing impressed me greatly. Uh -huh. uh, the, the sessions at the Russian Samovar were great, uh -huh. and the, all the musicians who played with him, uh, Slava, the uh, great Slava. Trom trombone player. Slava Nazarov. Sla Slava Nazarov uh -huh. was playing with him, and a lot of the American musicians. And it was a mixture, it was a marvelous, uh, uh, Wednesday night. Right. They always had it on right. Wednesday night. Right, the Wednesday. And the Pelmeni weren't bad either. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Igor and I became very close, and he played while he was living in New York, uh, played with my team, mm -hmm. and his brother uh, eventually uh, played with my team, and uh, Oleg, and uh, I consider Igor like my brother. Oh, really? Yeah, we're oh. very close. Oh, cool. And yeah. uh, I've written about him many times, and uh, through him I've met some of the other musicians. Uh, Alex Sipiagin would come and uh, sit in. Mm. And now he's made a, a great reputation for mm. himself. Yes. Uh, with the Mingus Band and, and mm. his own mm -hmm. CDs and whatever. I haven't heard Sipiagin lately uh -huh. uh, because I haven't heard the Mingus Band uh, uh, that much lately, but he's always impressed me uh, with his uh, great technical ability and the, uh, the way he you know, plays his ideas and mm. and the 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 very um, 
nature of the trumpet mm -hmm. uh, has a certain kind of power mm -hmm. and an edge to it, which mm -hmm. all the good good ones have. And uh, it was uh, noticeable from the first time I heard him that uh, he was uh, top class. <laughs> Just uh, Dmitry Bayevsky. Dmitry is a young, uh, I think he's about 29, mm -hmm. when, at least when I heard him, mm -hmm. he's either 29 or 30. He's from St. Petersburg uh -huh. originally, and um, he has a very uh, lovely tone on the alto saxophone. Mm -hmm. He's been influenced by Charlie Parker, but he doesn't try to sound mm -hmm. just like Charlie Parker. Mm -hmm. He has a very mellow style. Mm -hmm. uh, and very melodic. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. he he swings. Mm -hmm. He's got a, a good sense of melody, mm -hmm. and he's not uh, striving so hard to be different or be uh, play gimmicks. He just mm -hmm. the music comes out naturally, mm -hmm. and um, and that's a very important thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. I uh, know Boris. Mm -hmm. uh, he was playing with Igor at the Samovar, mm -hmm. and now, of course, he's with the Mingus Band. Mm -hmm. a, a, an excellent bass player. And um, it might be mentioned that some of the concerts Igor has done here with Igor Rakelson mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, uh, Uri Bashmet. Uri Bashmet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the way they've combined uh, jazz and classical music in a very natural way, mm -hmm. again, r rather than trying to, uh, to, make to fit together yeah. pieces that really... Right, right, right. That, that don't uh, work. It's done naturally. Again, if it's good music, it's good music. And they've done it, this fusion, without the capital F, <laughs> uh, it is, um, is, is, you know, really a great accomplishment. And the audiences have really responded uh, and quality to the playing that... Um, shows that it doesn't have to be the same thing all the time. Uh, you can be creative as long as you're creative and true to the spirit of, of the music. So that, that's that been a very interesting development. And of course the way Igor can go between classical and, and jazz music and combine them. The fact that um, Wynton Marsalis, when he was in Moscow, came and met Igor, went to his club and played with him, led to uh, his bringing Igor's big band here, and one of the great events of recent years mm. was Igor's big band and the Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra mm. on stage together, mm. um, playing, each playing and then playing together. <laughs> Uh, an amazing concert. Right. So I guess uh, in many ways Igor Butman is is the face of um, Russian music, uh, Russian jazz, uh, right. as an ambassador to uh, to the world. Вы помните Вячеслава Назарова? Well, as I mentioned before, uh, I met Slava when he was uh, taking part in the Wednesday night 
sessions at the Samovar, Russian Samovar on 52nd Street. And uh, not only, uh, you know, in meeting him, he's a very uh, nice personality with a sense of humor, but his playing of the, the slide trombone came out of uh, players like uh, Frank Rossellino and, and Carl Fontana, very smooth, uh, the way he negotiated it the lines uh, of, a, of an instrument that, uh, you know, when you're going back to the beginning of jazz, was, um, it took time to really develop uh, a smooth line on it. And a lot, I guess, is to do with the, the lip, with the lipping lip. uh, as much as the sliding. Yeah. And uh, he had a very beautiful tone and a very fluid delivery. And it's interesting, but, you know, there's so many, um, and I, I don't mean to indict the, the female singers, but there's so many female singers who think they can sing scat. Mm. But most of them are singing very emphatic, rhythmic syllables, but they're not doing what a, what a jazz musician can do when he scats or, or she, if, if they're a musician, if you're scatting, you must sing something equal to what you would be playing on your horn. That's why Dizzy Gillespie probably was one of the great scat singers, because what he scatted is just what he would be playing, hearing in his head. Slava could scat like that, oh. because it was the same line and ideas that he would be playing on the trombone if he were playing. And so I always remember his singing. Right. the story was that he was uh, he often drove between New York and Denver because he was living there with his family and uh, there was some it was around the time of Christmas or after and there were some Christmas trees on the road and he swerved to avoid the trees and uh, that's how the accident happened I, I don't know any more than that yeah And I think, uh, I mean, every country has its own musical tradition. But for me, uh, it's not just excellent training, but that's important. I think the Italians and the Russians are the best jazz musicians in Europe. Mm. And I think it's because of the great... Um, background in music, the classical training, you know, right. but also it's um, expressing the feeling of the people. Mm -hmm. And the Italians and the Russians, each in their own way, have a lot of uh, great feeling which comes out in the music. 
and uh, this I've learned by many trips to Italy and uh, by by going uh, and knowing the Russian musicians here in New York. Of course, you know we all know the classical traditions and the great composers from both of those countries. Right, right. This is not to denigrate Germany or France, you know, mm. but I think the the most world-class musicians besides here in the United States come from Italy and Russia. There's a certain level of um, technical accompli accomplishment, but with that, the soul. The land of jazz. Yeah. <laughs> Butman translated uh, later on. The uh, yeah, well, he came to the rescue, but it was an incredible concert, and uh, and then we had uh, during that week uh, people from that had been at the concert played at the club, uh -huh. and uh, you know packed audiences, and then we went to St. Petersburg, my wife and son and myself, uh -huh. and uh, there was one concert there also as well uh, and we were, were able to uh, spend part of the day in the Hermitage and yeah. it was a very interesting trip. Ira, Valentin invites you to visit Yekaterinburg. And, and, and where? So far, it's Yekaterinburg. Oh, in the Ural Mountains. Ural, Ural, Ural Mountains. Mountains. Uh, and he was a presenter of jazz program on local radio station like Willis Conover. They called him Russian Conover. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember the great stories about uh, the people in Russia uh, transcribing the broadcast of Willis Conover on yeah. old X-ray plates. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I was I was such a person. <laughs> yeah, amazing. You know, uh, but you know, the the real jazz music has a power to unite people and uh, one of the great blessings of being a jazz writer and the, the profession I've pursued you know since I was just out of school you know I was already writing about jazz in, in high school mm -hmm. newspaper and mm -hmm. college newspaper but um, just to have done what I've done, one of the great blessings is that it's taken me all over the world, to India, to Japan, to Africa, to the Caribbean, to Russia, to well, most of the European countries, uh, and uh, England, of course. And I've made many great friends uh, because of this music all over the world. It breaks down the barriers. Right, right. I'm only uh, uh, upset that there's a lot of music being played today that they call jazz that isn't <laughs> jazz. And they use the name, and uh, that offends me. Right, so right. If, if they think the name makes them money, why doesn't the music that really represents it, why isn't it produced more often instead they're putting in every other thing and calling it jazz. Right. You know, good music is good music. It doesn't matter what you call no, it. No matter what but, you call it. Right. But jazz has a special meaning, meaning 
uh, and it, it's the feeling of the music, the feeling of the blues that runs through it, whether you're playing the blues itself or not, it's a feeling of the blues, it's a certain kind of swing, uh, a, a forward motion, uh, it, it, you don't have to ask yourself if you're being moved because it gets to your head, your heart, your yeah. stomach, every place. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for whatever reason, other musics which are simpler uh, get to an audience that uh, doesn't even know what jazz is, and that makes the money, so, so that's what's pushed. Right. As we all know, money makes the world go round. Right. Unfortunately, it should be love that makes the world go round, but it, do <laughs> it doesn't. It's money. Спасибо за интервью. Thank you very much.